up, Steno Squad, and welcome to the November 2020 Student of the Month podcast episode. This month, we are recognizing Manette Kadori for her commitment to excellence in all aspects of being a Steno student in the Steno Key pilot program. Manette is consistently displaying a positive attitude and has accelerated through speed building despite being a non-traditional student. Manette, Tell us a little bit about yourself and let us know why it is that you consider yourself to be a non-traditional student. Hey, Katiana, I am in my 50s and I started school about a year and a half ago, maybe almost two years ago. I can't really remember. I had homeschooled our children. We have three daughters and my youngest was getting ready to graduate college and I was just wondering what do I want to start doing for myself. A lot of my life has been spent focusing on my kids and my family, which I've loved, but this has always been something I've kind of thought about doing. And when I brought it up to my husband, he was kind of surprised, but he was really supportive. So I just dove in and decided to go for this. It's kind of interesting because I think people who are around my age or a little bit older tend to not think that this is something we should try to pursue or we may even be discouraged from pursuing it because of our age. And I think that at this point, I was just saying, I want to go after some of my own dreams. And I just jumped in and decided I'm going to go for it, even if I'm not who would be considered a natural at this point in my life to be trying it. What do you see as the advantage in being an older student? I think that I have more time possibly than somebody who may be a little bit younger. I don't have little ones at home anymore, although I'm really, really busy with my family and that does have opportunity to pull me away sometimes. We're also grandparents now, so there's always something. But the thing that I've come to realize is I just want to be doing some things that I see purpose in and to commit the time to doing that. So I think it's actually a really great time for me to be trying to do this. And during COVID, it's been awesome because I've had something that's kept me really busy and productive and I haven't had to sit and I definitely have something that I could be putting my time into. And how much time are you putting into your schooling on a daily basis or weekly basis? I am encouraged in our school to do school at least six days a week for about four hours a day. I want to do it that much and I try to do it every day. I don't like the feeling of taking a day off, but I do occasionally do that. I usually try to put in at least four hours a day on a good school day to put my efforts into doing that. I would say minimum I would do two hours a day. On days where you get fewer hours of practice or less time to practice, how do you make sure those days are still beneficial? Um, Usually on the days that I'm not able to hit as much time, I tend to go back and I'll do some review files and practice some speed and just reinforce some of the skills that I've already gotten, but make sure that I've really nailed down those concepts. So those might be more of a review day for me instead of a pushing forward day. How do you decide what to do during those two hours of practice? Typically, my days that end up being like that are days where I've gotten pulled aside to do something else. Usually, it's family related. So, I don't plan those days. I don't typically schedule a review day. Those would be days where I didn't get to do as much school as I wanted to. So, I just try to get on my machine and have some time on here so that I don't feel like I'm going backwards. I'm just either maintaining a skill or trying to get deeper in that skill. And then what about your your four-hour days? What are those like? How do you know what to practice then? So the program that I'm in, we have a scheduled day set out for us. And I'll start out trying to do some finger drills. I will then sometimes do some review files on that too, just to get warmed up. And then the day is really structured so that I know what files I'm supposed to be accomplishing that day. And I'll work through those files and try to increase my speed each time, increase my accuracy each time, and look at my notes to see where I could be improving those. 
try to, you know, look where, where could I be phrasing? Where could I be putting these words together to get faster and just try to practice that skill? How often are you looking at your steno notes? I probably should look at my steno notes more. I usually look at them when I'm doing the file to transcribe. I will check them to see where, you know, what, what does that word mean? What does that look like? Obviously, I missed that. So I'll be reading through them there to do corrections. Another thing that I've been trying to do lately that I think is really helpful is just to play the file and go back and read my notes that I had written previously, try to read along with it as it's being read out loud to me. And that that's really, I, I've liked doing that that way. That's really good. It also helps you read faster because <laughs> when you're just reading your standard notes on your own without any audio playing, it could take a long time. Mm -hmm. It also helps you know for sure, hey, did I drop a word or what was this word supposed to mean? Uh, and you can still get the other benefits of realizing if you dragged or dropped or if something should have been phrased or briefed. So that's really a good technique. I really like that. I like it too. I've enjoyed doing it that way. It doesn't seem as hard for me when I'm having to think about reading my notes to do it that way. Will you go through the entire file or are sometimes you're just picking and choosing certain areas? Most of the audio is one to three minutes. So when I'm doing the read back like that and trying to read my steno notes, I listen to the whole file and go through it to look at it. What speed are you working at now and what chapter are you in? So I'm in chapter 20 of Magnum Steno and I usually start my takes at 140 and if I'm doing well at them, I'll bump them up 10 to 20 percent. So anywhere from one 50s to low 160s. How has that felt? Because before you started at Steno Key, you were already in a different Steno program. What speed were you when you transferred? I had finished theory using Magnum Steno, and I was trying to write and pass the test at 100. Let me chime in by letting our listeners know that at Steno Key, every participant, whether they're coming from another theory program, whether it's a Magnum Steno program, or whether they're a high speed student, or even a working reporter, everyone starts in chapter one. The exit speeds are anywhere from 40 to 140 words per minute, and those exit speeds are determined on an individual basis. Minette, do you remember what speed you were practicing? Like, what was your exit speed while you were in chapter one? So interesting, you talking about going back and starting chapter one, if I can just touch on that. For me, transferring to another program that started back over, going through Magnum Studio in chapter one, I kind of almost wondered, am I taking a step back to do this or is this a good thing for me to do? So I wrestled with that decision. And I think one of the things that's really stuck with me looking at different forums is how much court reporters emphasize that we know our theory inside and out. And that was one of the things that made me make the decision to go with Stenoki because I really like how this program really teaches the Magnum Steno theory, which I think is such a great theory for all of us to know or at least consider learning, but also that we master it. Court reporting can feel like you're drinking from a fire hydrant. So you go through these theories and you're just taking in so much information so fast. And just to slow down and be able to go back and then practice it at speed building speeds while I'm learning it, I just really liked this approach to going through school. And I feel like I'm really mastering the concepts by doing that. So I'm sorry, your question was more like what speed I was going at initially. Right. I well, let's take it in another direction. Knowing that you were attempting to pass 100 words per minute when you transferred to Stenokey, and now at Stenokey, you were being required to pass dictation files at 120 words per minute. Was that scary at all for you? That part really didn't bother me because we were doing it in chunks. You know, it wasn't like taking everything that I knew at that point and trying to apply it at 120. It was taking the information that we had just been taught and applying that information at that speed. So it was more manageable and something that, yes, it takes practice. So at Steno Key chapters, one through 10, the exit speed is 120 words per minute. Have any of the dictations in chapters one through 10 at 120, have they ever felt too fast for you? When I was working on those chapters and trying to hit them at the speeds that were being asked of us, I would say some of them definitely could feel dense in parts of them. So when you hit those dense parts of the dictations, yes, it can feel fast. But 
we're asked to do each take regardless of what our score is three times. So it gives us three opportunities to work on that and get faster at it. And as you get more comfortable and you worked through the material, those speeds then become attainable, even when it's really dense and part of the dictation. So the 120s might have felt challenging, but you get to the point where you can handle it. And it can happen pretty quickly. Like typically if I have one file, that's a three minute file and I need to hit that file at 120 at 97%, I can typically hit that within 45 minutes of trying to write it at an increased speed or hitting the speed that I need to. And now you're in chapter 20 at 140. You're about to be in chapter 21 working at 160, but you've already had a taste of 180 when you were in chapters 13 through 19. How did that feel to actually be working on some 30 second files or one minute files at 180 reviewing the theory concepts? That was really encouraging to me because it was like, oh my goodness, I actually am being able to hang on here at 180 and get all this down. It makes you think if I can do it for 30 seconds, eventually I'm going to be able to do it for three to five minutes and then all day. (laughs) Right. I wholeheartedly agree. The thing is, students love speed building. They would prefer to do speed building over any of the other subjects because they love the machine so much. And when I put together the curriculum for Steno Key, I made sure that everything in theory had a speed building component because the reality is you must know your theory in order to increase your speed. And now with making these 30 second review files at 180 words per minute while in chapter 13 of sentences you've already heard, you've you've already practiced, it really helps the student see the possibilities that they can truly be a professional stenographer. And it still shows them that they still need to practice to get there. Yeah, definitely there's moments of confidence and then there's moments where your confidence are just really shaken. And to have something that you can see that, wow, I I did good in this. So I can walk away from this and feel really good about it. We need those moments when we're not hitting it as well as we'd like to and we're wondering if we can do it so yes i think part of this whole thing is such a mental game there's moments when we have so much self-talk in our heads going on that oh my gosh i just don't know if i'm cut out for this and it's capturing those thoughts and saying okay i feel like that it's okay that i feel like that but what do i do to get around it and that means getting on my machine practicing, looking at the areas where I'm stumbling and trying to work on that, where am I weak, and work on those areas of weakness. For one thing, I've got a really great support group. When I feel discouraged, I can talk to my husband, I can talk to my family and friends, and they listen to me and they're like, you got this, you know, we need some cheerleaders on our side. But just hear it, but let it go and work on what we can work on. How often do you feel you are dealing with feelings of inadequacy and how long do those feelings typically last? I probably at some moment in every day have a moment where I'm like, oh goodness, am I going to really be able to do this? But then again, I'm doing it. And when I look back, I've come a long way in it. I'm getting better every day. And James Clear, he wrote a book called Atomic Habits and it's really good. He's just talking about when we have a goal, just work towards that goal every day. 1% every day takes us so much further down the road. When we turn around, we realize how much we've progressed. It's just these little baby steps we're taking every day. I don't even think we realize how much we're learning and growing and getting to the goal line. Just by doing it, we're doing that. Every day I have moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. But then there's also, I love getting on my machine. I love writing. I think it feels really fun to just touch this machine. It's just something I enjoy. So I'm going to keep doing it and I think I can get there. James Clear has a blog as well and it is absolutely amazing. It's like one of the best corners of the internet. So other than James Clear, are there any other books that you've read that are helping you while on your journey to becoming a professional stenographer? I really enjoyed reading The Talent Code. That's another good one that just shows us like heart that that breaking down the process into these little tidbits of how you do something makes you a pro at doing it. The effort is in just 
getting on there and working hard at it and applying the skill. And that's what's going to get us there. Other than reading books, is there something that you use to help you in your practice sessions? Certainly praying and talking to God about this and, you know, giving this to him. Also, I use my husband and my family and friends to just be a sounding board too and get encouragement that way. That's really where I get some of my encouragement from. Tatiana, it feels like such a long journey, but every day I just have started deciding, you know what, I'm going to enjoy every day that I'm doing this instead of just looking towards the finish. I want to enjoy the process of it too. And the struggle, it's hard, but it's also fun. It's also challenging. It's also you know, something that I can feel proud of myself every day that I, I worked hard towards something that I want to accomplish. Minette, I'm so glad you brought that up because enjoying the process is crucial to staying motivated. You're more likely to succeed if you enjoy the process. People who have process-oriented goals versus focusing on outcome-oriented goals are more likely to achieve their desired long-term goal. And I know that was a mouthful. It was just so hard for me to even try to get out. But basically, focusing on the process, enjoying the process, loving the process is more likely to lead to you actually reaching your desired outcome. Now, Manette, before you started Steno School, how did you envision it would be and how is it compared to your reality? I didn't tell you this part of my story, but when I was in my early 20s, I actually went to a court reporting school in Atlanta and I did it at night. It was just in a time of my life when I was more interested in doing other things than just doing school. So it was more of a sidebar kind of, you know, hey, I'll do that when I feel like it. But I always liked it. Whereas this time, I think I was at a stage in my life when I realized that it was actually something I wanted to do and something I wanted to pursue. I've been putting a lot more effort into it. I think there's a lot of reward in that, like setting a goal, pursuing that goal and working on it. I'm just working hard at it and I like working hard at it. Minette, if there is someone right now listening and they're in their early 20s and they're interested in doing things that are maybe not steno, what advice would you have for them? Should they stick it through? Should they pursue their other interests? If I was looking back at younger me and I could talk to myself and maybe shake myself up a little bit, I would have said, you need to get your head on straight and realize what do you want to be doing? Don't be so short-sighted, but think more long-term about what is going to bring you joy in life, what is going to bring you a sense of accomplishment, and work at that. Yes, you can still have fun, but work at the things that are going to have an impact, a long-term impact on you and your family. I still have had a fantastic life with the choices that I've made, so I don't have regret in some of the things that happened because I didn't become a court reporter. But would I have loved to have been a court reporter for the past 30 years? I absolutely think I would have loved it. If you love this at all, if you're enjoying it at all, don't give up. Just really make this something that you can do because you want it. And yes, there might be bad days. And yes, this is hard, but we can do it. That's really good advice. So I definitely see the benefit in learning when you're younger, but when you're actually able to enter this career or this field as a second career or as somebody with just much more wisdom, there are benefits to that as well. I agree. One of the things they've been talking to some other students who are younger who just get frustrated with different things. When you're an older student or you've just had more opportunity to be out in the workforce or just life in general, I feel like I can let more things roll off my back, let people be people, but it's going to be like that. I'm sure there are going to be some days where some lawyers just could be real jerks, you know, and how will we handle that? And do we just let that roll off our backs? There are days that we're going to be more frustrated with ourselves or maybe not doing as well, but it's just, yeah, with maturity and some life experience, I agree. I I'm glad to have some of that so that now I can pursue what I want to when the different experiences come up or the negative feelings come up or whatever, you learn how to deal with them in a little bit different way. While you've been on the Steno journey, are there any new life lessons you've learned? I think so, Katiana. I think part of it is that I tend to have always 
been a little bit of a go with the flow kind of person. And I always let everybody else's priority. Like if it matters to you, I'm going to do what matters to you. And I still feel that way. Like I always want to take care of the people who are around me. But I've also at this later stage realized that it's good for me to have goals for myself and to pursue those goals and to make myself as much a priority in my own life as the other people around me are a priority to me. So I'm really happy to be doing this because I guess I've just come of age and realized something that I really do want to do and now I'm going for it. I know we have kind of talked about sometimes having some self-doubt and such but do you feel that you can do this? Do you feel that, hey, in 2021, I'm going to be a working court reporter? So my goal is to be working next fall. That's my goal. And do I still have self-doubt about that? There's moments that I do, like, will I ever be able to be fast enough? And the only way I'll know that is to keep working at this. And I've got a good year to get that accomplished. And I think I can, but time will tell. But I, it's not that I'm giving up. I just will work really hard and see where I am. But I, I think I can do it. I think you can do it too, especially with where you are in the curriculum. You're about to start chapter 21 next week, which your exit speed there is gonna be 160 words per minute for four minutes because you've already demonstrated that you could write everything from chapters one through 20 at a solid 140 words per minute. You're more than halfway there. And I think Mark Kisslingberry, I can't remember if he said if you make it to 140, that you have what it takes to be a court reporter. I think uh, that was the speed that he said. And so sometimes you hang on those little encouragements and tidbits that are like, okay, I can do that so I can keep going. You're more than halfway there for sure, speed wise, uh, especially when you're writing a short theory like Magnum Steno. It's only a few extra strokes that you're putting in in that, that minute to be able to get those extra 40 words. And 180 lit is harder, in my opinion, than a 225 Q&A. So once you're getting those 180 lits, you're definitely 225 material. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there soon. Yes, you will be. Absolutely, you will be. What is it that scares you the most about steno school? Not being able to do it. Like, what if I can't do this? That's what scares me the most. But it doesn't stop me from continuing to try it. Like, I'm not going to let that fear stop me. I'm just going to keep working. So you've been in the Steno Key program since April of 2020. As you mentioned, it's super, super structured. And you follow the curriculum, you follow the agenda, you've been very successful in doing so. Does any of that help you feel less scared? <laughs> It absolutely does. For me, when I got out of theory, I kind of felt like I was trying to increase speed and do those things. And I didn't really have a structured program to do it. I had watched some of your videos, Katiana, so I was already a fan before I ever first talked to you. The way you think about things and the way you approach things really lined up with how I had already thought about it. So coming into it, to have structure and to have a day-to-day -day plan for me was super helpful. I didn't need to wake up in the morning and think, how am I gonna t attack my day? How am I gonna tackle the task ahead of me? This program structures it very clearly, You know what I need to accomplish or what I need to be working on. Another thing that I really like is just feedback and the accessibility that I have with you as my teacher and my coach that if I were to ask you a question, you would really help me understand it. Your lessons are great. For me, this has been a fantastic program and a great way for me to approach my speed building and just really nailing down my expertise in the theory. So you've said about a lot of nice things about the Steno Key program, so thank you for that. But what is your least favorite part about being in the Steno Key program? Before we start a new chapter, there's a long day of finger drills. Those can be a lot. There are a lot to do, but I do see the benefit in doing them. Like as we get to higher speeds, I'm realizing just how much I need the dexterity of being able to move quickly between different finger strokes that are sometimes really awkward. And those help me, but they're kind of dreadful to do. I understand, and I'm not taking offense. <laughs> so on your finger drill day, that's also when you're looking at the video lessons for a new chapter. How, how do you approach a new chapter? 
I have changed it up a little bit. Now what I do is I watch your lectures and I actually snap pictures of every screen that you do where you're showing us new words. And then I go back and I add everything into my dictionary. And sometimes I'll even, because this is just a way that I like to learn, I'll write it out into a notebook. But it's faster for me to just kind of listen to you. I might take, you know, five or six screenshots at a time and then stop your video and implement that information and practice it for a few minutes and then start your video back up and do the same thing. But that's how I've been approaching your videos. That's a really good technique. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back to if there's some areas that it's like, oh, shoot, you know, what was the theory on that? Or what were some of those briefs that I'm not quite hanging on to? And I'll just review those, especially the way dictations are set up. You'll review a concept. And I like it because you actually you'll have the files for us, but you also tell us what words you're focusing on. So I can practice those for a few minutes before I actually start doing my dictations. It's like, OK, how do I do that phrasing or what does that look like? And I'll just practice some different phrasing before I actually hit the dictation dictation files. What is your interaction like with other STEM students or other participants in the STEMUT program? Do you get along? Do you guys help each other or do you kind of stick to yourself? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, we have a really pretty good active Facebook page that's just for Stenoki students. We'll ask questions to each other on there. Occasionally we might messenger each other privately to, to discuss some of that. I've had some text messaging with some of the other students when we're discussing something and recently we'll get together and have some Zoom meetings and one of the other students has been facilitating that. You're not even really a part of it. And we'll just talk about different techniques or different ways we're approaching school or things that are bothering us or things that we're working on. And I actually have only gotten to participate in that once, but it was amazing. It was such a nice thing to see the other students, you know, for us to be online students we don't always get that interaction but it was great the other student who led it he's amazing he did such a good job facilitating it so it was just really very nice to walk along some of our other classmates and see how we're doing and have an opportunity to encourage each other and give each other some helpful hints and stuff like that it was great stenography can be so isolating and now with this pandemic it can feel like a solo sport more than ever and steno is one of those things where if someone is not a stenographer, they have a hard time relating to what you're experiencing. And this is why I highly recommend every steno student find a steno bestie. So that way they have the support of someone who actually gets it. It is helpful because as much as we try to talk to other people and they understand a little bit about what we're trying to accomplish, it's just such a different skill level than other people do. It's not like a typical college setting. It's not even a typical way to learn. So when we can talk to each other about it and get it, it helps. <laughs> techniques that were brought up on how different people go about their day. There were also different techniques on how to schedule your time. There was the Pomodoro technique that was brought up. It's a tool that you use to set like a set time and then take a break and then do another set time and take a break. So it, it lets you be really focused on your task that you're doing, but you know it's just for a set amount of time and then you're going to get to take a break. So some of those kind of techniques like that, we did talk about finger drills, but you know that sometimes you just need to like, you know, complain for a hot second, but get on with what you're supposed to be doing. I love the Pomodoro technique. Even if I'm doing chores, I constantly have a timer going so that I could tell my, hey, listen, it's only 10 minutes that you have to do this or also to make sure I don't stay on a task too long and that it messes up my entire schedule. Definitely learning from other people that are in the program is super helpful. The thing is you could learn from somebody who's not doing so well and you could also learn from somebody who's doing the best. It's great that, that when you're meeting in the Steno Zoom meetings that everybody has a platform to speak and share and it's a safe place. Yes. Minette. You mentioned that you're really looking forward to working in the legal industry as a court reporter. Do you have real time on your radar? Are you looking to be a real time court reporter who provides real time 
translation to attorneys and clients? That is definitely my ultimate goal. I would love to be able to do that. And I think I can do that. I tend to write pretty clean as it is now. So that encourages me to continue pursuing that. But it just gives us more opportunity. And it seems like it's going to give us more money if we can pursue that goal. And probably moving forward, more people are going to expect that. So yes, I definitely want to pursue real time. And has that affected your practice routine currently? I'm trying to write really clean and add words to my dictionary, I guess are the main two things. How often do you feel that you're adding words to your dictionary? Oh, daily. Probably every file, if I come across a word that I'm realizing, hey, how would I write that? Or I'm having to think about it. I'll go back and try to look at that word and think how many different ways I would possibly write it. And then I'll try to add that to my dictionary. How do you approach a messy stroke or a stroke that just didn't come out as clean as you would like? Sometimes it's just because the speed is pushing me. So I'm writing it that way. But sometimes I'll realize I wrote a completely different word. And then I realize I need to work on either Either that brief or that phrasing or that fingering, you know, like I'm weak in that stroke and I need to practice some finger drills in that and get that stroke stronger. And do you use the metronome when you're doing those finger drills? I tend to not use the metronome. I was using it, but now a lot of times I'll just work on increasing speed and I'll just watch the speed dial on my machine to see how fast I'm going as I'm practicing my finger drills. And I try to get up to 150, 180 minimal. And if I'm not hitting that, then I will mark those finger drills and keep practicing those until I can get up to that speed. Do you keep those finger drills like in a notebook or a word file? I save them and I will highlight or check the ones that I'm struggling on. And those are the ones that I'll go back to and really put my focus on for practice. Minette, what would you define as deliberate practice for a stenographer? What is deliberate practice? What does it mean to you? So for me, my deliberate practice is to look at what my day looks like, hit the files that I'm working on, and really work on those files to get to the speed first that I've set a goal for, and also to have clean notes and look at anything that I may not have written correctly correct those briefs, phrases, whatever they are, and then go back. And I will try to do them a couple of times until I realize, okay, I'm writing this clean. That's my approach to deliberate practice. And it's, it's working for you. Mino, why is it that you feel that you're so successful in this program? And what could the other participants learn from your success so that they too can be as successful or even more successful? Well, I'd love to see them be more successful. I'm ready to get input from them as well. But I think that the accountability is really good in this program. I mean, you expect us to be putting in the effort and the work and you're making sure that we're doing it. You're fully aware of what each student is working on and we're aware that you're aware. So I think that's a good accountability. The structure of it is so helpful just to get up and know what my day is planned for and be able to work on the files that I've been assigned. So this is a big elephant that we're eating and it just breaks it down into the sizes and the way we can attack it. So that helps me knowing that there's a structured program and it encourages me. And I I just really feel like, I know I've said this and I'm sorry to keep reiterating it, but this program is really just teaching me the theory so well and it's given me a confidence and that if i can just practice and work on it i'm gonna get it so i think that just the structure of it is a big thing but just also that i'm seeing success in learning it what advice do you have for any of the listeners out there any of the students on what they can do to improve their steno journey so that they can reach 225 as soon as they wish. We need to be committed to it, put in the effort to get there, be happy with the successes that we're having every day. Look at the positives, it's a constant push and it's a big mountain to climb, but we have to enjoy the process too. Enjoy that you're doing something for yourself. Absolutely, I really appreciate this, Manette. I really appreciate you being on this podcast. I really appreciate your work ethic and the progress that you've been making in the pilot program at Steno Key. I thank you so much for being on the episode and I cannot wait to 
be able to update people with how well you're doing in the future. Thank you. Well, Katiana, I want to say thank you to you too, because you are definitely one of my heroes and I appreciate you every single day. And thanks so much for what you're doing for us. Mm -hmm.